Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be um, taking this session today. And um, I would start by saying my name is Anita Human, and the topic is experience open source through non-code contributions. So when I started contributing to open source about two uh, over two years back, one of the huge challenge that I had was the thought that open source sounded really complicated. And I had very little um, skills when it comes to um, web development because I started with front-end development. So I had very little skills to contribute to this project, or at least that's what I thought. And whenever I enter, uh, I go through a project repository, I would see so many technical um, issues. And for someone who had very little knowledge at the time, I always shied away from most of these questions because I had no idea what I was supposed to do. I had I didn't have the skill set, but I wanted to contribute to open source, yeah? And it was not until a year after that I realized I could actually contribute to open source without um, the coding skills. And that was because I saw that people were doing it in the community. I asked a lot of questions. And that's what I'll be sharing um, during these sections, how you can contribute to open source without actually writing code. And um, I think the introduction has been done already. I am a developer advocate. I contribute to uh, open source communities like Layer 5, Chaos, Ride the Docs Project. And um, I love chicken, fried chicken, and um, I love cats as well. So that's all about me. During this section, we're going to look at a brief intro to open source. I'm sure we're already aware of what open source is. And we'll be uh, looking at some popular myths that have been said about contributing to open source or open source in general. And then the skill sets that you need, um, skill set that you can gain by contributing to open source and how you can experience open source. Then we're going to look at open source and beyond where we talk about the different coding um, skills that you need aside co um, development that you can contribute to open source and how you can utilize these contributions to uh, towards your career growth and also benefits of open source. So let's get into it. The so open source software, um, this software, the, when we talk about open source software, we're talking about projects that have their code base um, developed under a license that makes it publicly um, accessible to people. Now this means that this code base is available for people to modify, to improve on it, to um, distribute amongst themselves. And um, that is what open source is all about. And the culture involves collaboration, which means you can contribute from any part of the world, can play around with the code and improve on it. And all of that, that which actually sounds interesting, right? And uh, there's so many myths that come, like, like so many thoughts from different people who are not really aware of how open source works or what open source is all about. And some of these things include that um, open source is simply doing free work, which a lot of people would come to say out here today. But um, I think recently there's been so much talks about how to um, contribute to open source, but then still um, enable your career and even get like financial incentives, all of that. There's so many talks around that today. We, we can see it through internships. We can see it through getting contracts with open source projects. So like there's so many ways that I think this particular um, thought about open source being completely doing free work is not true. And another is that um, contributing to open source is only code based. And I can tell you for the past one year, while um, developing this uh, topic or while uh, working on my slides, I went over my GitHub repository and I realized that I, I made the least contribution since I started my um, developer journey this year. And I have been contributing to open source quite all right. I've been making a series of contributions, but most of them are not code based. So you don't see so much contributions on my GitHub, which means that I, I can actually contribute to open source without coding, right? And then you can also see that open source is not boring because during this time, I get to meet new people. I get to interact with a lot of people and um, learn new perspectives and cultures. I, there's so many things that get um, in, like, involved when you're collaborating with different persons from different parts of the world, different projects. And these people have different ideologies, but we're able to work together towards a common goal. And I personally find that really exciting. And then open source is only for experts. Personally, I used to think open source was only for experts. 
And so whenever I I heard about open source, I would shy away from the project. I was saying when um, after two years of my journey, and I'm sure by then I must have had enough skills, I'll come back to contribute. That's because I was so scared of the thoughts of open source and how complicated it sounds. And um, this about a few things that so many people really think about open source, which makes them scared to contribute to open source or to even make attempts to get involved in the first place. And um, there's so many ways you can actually experience open source here yes, that for me, I always look for the one that fits or is, I'm more comfortable with. And uh, for you, you might actually go with based on your skill set on experience, or you might decide to go with um your um your what you feel more comfortable in which could be speaking which could be writing which could be helping other people all of that so you can experience open source either by focusing on the project end where you you use your skill sets to improve on the code or to um, develop new softwares and all of that which is something people are doing you can help by designing the softwares you can help by improving on documentation for this open source project that's you experiencing open source through open source projects. But you can also open, experience open source through community. For instance, this um, conference that we're actually at is one of the things that promotes open source and open source topics, right? And um, the persons that were behind the um, facilitating and organizing of these events are contributing to open source actively. And they focus more on the community end. We, we're not writing code to build this conference, but like there's so much being done and put in place and it's coming together. So like there's so many ways you can experience open source that might not even lead you to um, opening the GitHub um, project or developing all of that. But it all depends on you and how comfortable you are with contributing. And um, a lot of times we want to say, if you're contributing, look for something that you're comfortable in and something you're you're more al aligned with because in that way you find it really hard to get bored of the entire experience and uh, you even find more ways to get innovative about your contributions. And personally, I chose um, the community aspect, which is advocacy and um, helping other persons more aware of open source topics, open source projects and concepts and all of that. So like, it all depends on you. You can decide to do both ways if you have the skill set, but if you want to also look for one that um, is more comfortable with you, that's perfectly fine. And um, when, it's, when we're talking about open source, there's so many ways that you can contribute that do not have to do with code. And that is the main purpose of this topic, to actually address some of these ways that we can contribute without um, writing a lines of code or having to learn how to use GitHub. It was until recently that I got to realize so many people did not even have a GitHub account, but they've been contributing to open source for the longest of times. And um, so I'm like, okay, that's interesting because at first I thought I had to like go through GitHub to do everything that I'm, um, every form of contributions that I'm making in open source here. But like so many persons are not even familiar with how to use Git or um, Git or GitHub, not even to talk of GitLab, which is an open source to itself. So you can contribute, your contributions can come in different forms and um, it can be through education, through research. It could be just recognizing a project or telling um, more persons about an open source project and um, all of that are the different ways you can contribute by. I try to um, categorize them into different aspects and then one of which is writing. So if you are someone who has technical writing skills or you just have knowledge on writing and content creation, I think there's like so much that can be done in the open source space with this kind of skill set. And starting with documentation, for instance, we're trying to make sure that documentation for open source project is as um, usable and um, relatable, accessible to people as much as possible. Because these projects have uh, people have to actually go through these um, documentations to understand or even adopt some open source projects, yeah? So like, if you have skill sets when it comes to writing and all of that, you can decide to dive into um, the open source um, project, focus particularly on documentation. And there's so many projects that support this, such as the Write the Docs project, the Good Docs project, and um, so many other um, working groups that 
pro, uh, communities have that focus primarily on contributing to documentation. So if that's something that interests you, you might also want to explore that out. You can also contribute by writing articles. And um, this is something that I do. Most times I just sit and write about um, if a random open source project or a random open source topic. And uh, it's fascinating how so many persons would want to learn about that topic that you've written about. So if you have skills with this, you can also pick it up and decide to like um, develop on it. So you can also create tutorials and videos for that person to interact with using YouTube or even putting it on the um, on a project website for people to also interact with. This is an excellent way to contribute because so many persons find it a lot easier to learn with um, tutorials and videos. And if you have the skills to actually do this, that would be excellent because so many persons will end up benefiting from the content that you're creating and then translating and transcribing. And let's take, for instance, this conference. Now, I see that there's some form of language barrier. And so we actually need, um, at the end of this, some persons might need what I'm saying to be translated so that um, you can understand, yeah? So like, I know there's someone somewhere that is actually working on this transcription and um, translating everything so people can understand um, everything that I'm saying equally. So like that's excellent way to also contribute to open source when it comes to writing. Now, when we move to the community aspect, there's so many uh, areas that you can dive into, which can be event planning, setting up meetups, um, workshops, conferences. If you have an opportunity to get involved in this and volunteer, you can also um, get your hands dirty with um, things like this because um, for most persons, they use it as a means to develop their program management and event planning skills. Other persons use it as a means to network with more people because there's so many persons that have attended this conference today and having the opportunity to host these people would, is something that I find, I want to actually commend the persons putting together this conference because it's not easy, but we've been able to pull this off. So like, this is also an amazing way to um, impact the open source community. You can take up moderating. Let's take, for instance, our Slack channels, our Discord forum, and all of this. A lot of times we have people come in and no one gets to welcome them. No one gets to point them to where they're going. So you, you as someone who is new to the community, you find yourself lost most times when you don't get this um, direction. So if you feel you have the skills or knowledge about a particular community, you can take up that task to help other persons feel welcome, point them to where they need, answer their questions when they need in the Slack channel or in the discourse or whatever platform that your community uses. You can also look out for um, um, program management and uh, setting up uh, open source initiatives. And um, a, a quick example of this is um, me working or contributing to the chaos community. Now, there is this project that came up recently and a team of us from the Chaos Africa group decided to take it up. Now, this is something that normally we would have probably not have had an idea of how to get involved in this, but open source actually paved the way for that. And we've been able to set up that program and it's currently working smoothly right now. And then you also look at the review aspect. When I talk about reviews, we're talking about um, being part of a team that helps to review other things or reviewing code base for projects. Now, if you, you're familiar with a particular topic, you can always go to GitHub to drop a comment or two whenever a newbie contributes to a project. It goes a long way to make this person feel welcome in that particular community. You might think this is not a relevant contribution, but so many persons actually appreciate the tiny efforts that we make in this um, in, in terms of reviewing projects and giving feedback. You can also participate in some initiative, like for instance, the Chaos Community. We have the uh, event badging uh, project where we issue out badges to uh, events and even open source projects. Now, this this um, review process is done manually. So, like, there are a team of persons that actually go through this project to check, um, to compare it with our metrics, and then issue out these badges. Yes. So, you, if it's, if this is something you find interesting, you can look for communities like this that are part of it and join the review team. And then you can also look at the testing and adopting parts where you can um, develop the user experience, make sure that the application works perfectly as it should. You can do this through user testing and reporting bugs even. And let's say you have 
a more um, in-depth understanding of a project. You can as well advocate for this project at conferences. You can advocate for this project in um, other communities and tell people that this project does this and I can walk you through if you need help with that. That's an excellent way to get started with your contributions. Now on the education part, there's so many ways you can get involved. For instance, monitor, um, mentoring people and uh, you can do this through programs like Outreach, Google Season of Dog, Google Summer of Code. All of these are internship um, programs that people participate in, yeah? And in these communities, whenever these internship programs come up, the maintainers are usually flooded with tax. And so if you are someone who has vast knowledge about that particular technology, you can sign in or volunteer as a mentor to help um, put these other um, uh, interns on the right path. And um, I did I do this kind of contributions through um, mentoring other programs like um, the anitab.org community where I participated in. And I really found it interesting because in the process, I also learned from some of the persons I ended up mentoring. And I, I thought it was an exciting experience. You can also look out for the onboarding part. Let's say you, um, like I mentioned so many times when contributors join a community here. Yeah, the fear of not knowing where to go or what to do or how to start can be really overwhelming. But um, having just one person um, point you to where you should start from goes a long way in the life of a contributor who's just joining a community. And um, so if you are someone who has good experience with um, putting people on the right path or breaking down um, complex com um, context, you can take up the onboarding um, project in that particular community and help other persons on the puts and get them on the right track. You can also do code reviews, which is also an excellent way to contribute and research projects. Let's say your, uh, com your community or your project is trying to find out something from the users or from the community in general. You can lead research pro um, programs like this to help gain more uh, insights about this concept that your community is trying to discover on. Now, you can also look on the design part where you have the user um, experience and user interface. So you can develop the improve or develop on the UI of this project and help to put this in track. Now, so many times you will see um, designers say they're not finding um, design contributions, but when it comes to contributing this, this kind of um, contributions, the best way to actually um, identify or even find most non-code contributions is through the community. Because a lot of these co conversations come up during the meetings, a lot of these conversations come up during the, the uh, discussions in Slack or uh, community channels. So like if you're waiting on the GitHub channel, you might not see um, these issues created because they're not code related yet. Yeah? So you can either find more of this going through the community. So you can look at the animation part the graphic design and even developing um, project style guide. This is also an excellent way to get your hands dirty that do not even involve writing any form of code. And then you can also look on the support part where you help to donate to open source projects. And um, there's so many platforms that you can actually do this, the, um, support open source projects financially. And Open Collective is one of them. So you can go through this and look for open source projects. If you find these projects interesting, you can decide to support them financially. You can even start a project, which is an excellent way to appreciate developers and um, even um, give recognition to that project for what they're doing. Because the stars go a long way to showing how much people will, okay, this pe uh, this project is active. It has so many persons engaging on it. This, the stars you drop on a project go a long way as well. And then you can also adopt this project and refer them to people who you feel might find them really, really useful. Because outreach and this publicity is something that most open source projects are not able to gain access to. So if you have the ability to do this, you can also pick it up and lead this project. Now we see that all of these um, methods that we mentioned here, none of them um, require you to writing um, a line of code or having to uh, learn a new technology to get involved. Most of these are just things that you use the soft skills that you've developed from interacting with people or from going, to, um, going through a particular um, 30 minutes 
video, YouTube video, and you'll be able to get started with it. Most of this um, skill set that I mentioned earlier are ways of contributing. Do not even involve you to um, have to set up your GitHub account to do all of this. And so many persons today, you'll be surprised at how so many persons are actively making contributions to open source without um, going through the code base. But then how can we utilize some of these contributions towards career opportunities? Well, um, everything boils down to choosing the direction that you want to go into. So let's say you want to build a career around, um, around community and developer relations. Then you know that your, co your contributions have to be um, towards this particular direction. You're going to focus more on setting up programs or writing or improving on the documentation and all of that, helping other persons on uh, get on track, and all of that. So let's say you want to focus more on the research part and you want to build a career as a um, UX researcher or a user researcher in open source. Then you have to like look for contributions that are more tailored towards this particular skill set. And like I said earlier, the best way to actually um, navigate or even identify these kind of contributions is by going through the community because um, when you listen to the community, you'll be able to understand which parts of your skill set is required and then how you can even develop new ways to contribute. And uh, so choosing a direction and then making contributions towards each of these um, career paths that you've chosen yourself will help um, level the ground for you to easily just navigate towards that aspect. Now, I'll use myself for instance. I started as a front-end developer, but I knew I wanted to do more of developer relations. And so I did more of community engagement and um, moderating and also mentoring other persons within the community. And with my um, content creating skills, I put that together. And um, today um, I contribute more on the DevRel aspect of open source. And it's something I am really, really confident and proud about. And so like um, aligning your contributions according to the direction you want to go is an easy way to get started. And some of the tips I want to list, um, leave is um, first of never underestimate yourself why choosing this part particular aspect. Now, let's say you're a designer and you come to a project like um, Elastic uh, or um, any project, any most of these open source projects are really, really huge. And you're trying to find your way around. A lot of times it's overwhelming. And you'll be like, no, this other person has, has like degrees in this area. They're way better off than myself. So I, should, um, I shouldn't even make a suggestion. But sometimes your suggestions might just be what the project needs. And um, your suggestions might just be what will change the project. Now, a quick example of this is when I started with the Layer 5 community because it was difficult for me to get involved. Uh, myself and a friend, Ruth, we came together to start the onboarding um, project where we would um, have one-on-one -on -one calls with members of the community to walk them through on how to get involved with the project. And before we realized it, this became a, um, a, an active thing that was done within the community. And up to today, we still practice this particular thing, but so many persons come back to say they, um, the uh, short moments that they had why we help them get into the community, help them like better understand the project and find where to contribute. So like never underestimate yourself, regardless of what the skill set you have might be, and then choose a community or the contributions that best resonate with you. If you're not, if you don't have like solid skill sets with this and you're not sure that this is something you're comfortable doing, then if you end up pushing yourself and going through with it, the high chances you get. Um, frustrated along the way because some days it gets really frustrating and so you get frustrated along the way and you might end up giving up on that particular path that you've chosen or that community that you've decided to go with so like look for something that resonates with you and then uh, invest so much in it and then be intentional and consistent with your contributions by being intentional i mean the meetings Meetings play a huge role for people who are contributing to non-code contributions. Meetings play a huge role in how you get involved in the community because most days the com conversations that require you to volunteer are discussed within these one-on-one -on -one meetings. And if you're unavailable for any of the meetings that go on within the community, you might stay there for months, going to two years, 
without even identifying one particular non-code contributions to get involved in. So like if you're joining the con communities, uh, community meetups or discussions actively, you definitely notice somewhere that needs your help and you can volunteer to contribute. So perfect your skills in that particular set. Like I said, just tailor the contributions, every contributions you're making, be intentional about it towards that particular um, career path that you're trying to work yourself into and then network while collaborating meet other persons that are still doing the same thing with you i got on a call with someone yesterday and the first thing she told me is i think you should go to social media and look for these individuals that are already doing this thing and uh, follow them look at what they're doing sometimes reach out to them and ask questions if this is something that if you find yourself in a situation like this then try as well to collaborate with people that are already doing it ask them how they've done it. You, you learn a lot when you ask questions and ask for help, especially from someone who has more experience. And so you adopt um, new soft skills while doing all of this. It could be empathy, it could be um, helping people to um, communicate better in the community, whatever the soft skill might be, just um, pick it up and um, make it Make it a habit. Then while you're doing all of this, be preparing your resume alongside and then showcase your experience. Now, it's always, um, if you go through social media, one thing everyone seems to be preparing, um, prioritizing on these days is learning in public. The more you come up and showcase this thing you're doing, tell people that, okay, I've been contributing and my contributions have been focused on documentation or I've been contributing and my contributions have been focused on um, um, DEI in the community or anything, people can now identify you with that particular contribution. And um, these people could, could also be um, the employees that are looking for persons to fill in these spaces in their companies. And so I'd also want to add a note that just like climbing a ladder, you never know how many contributions you need to make in that particular aspect that might get you to your career goal or that particular spot that you're looking for. If you're trying to um, use these non-code contributions towards your career opportunities. And then some skills you end up gaining by contributing to open source, but not code base include um, the people management skills where you know how to get along with people from different backgrounds and different um, um, states or even countries, basically. You also learn how to communicate with people better via um, chats, via um, community chat platforms or emails or um, even one-on-one -on -one conversations. But you just know that there are certain things that I need to say. I have to... Uh, understand certain languages in terms of inclusion. I don't want to use certain terms to offend someone. These are so many things that you also learn while collaborating in the open source space. And then empathy. You know that so many persons react to things differently. So you have to understand that then it's not everyone that might accept or um, take certain things the way you would. So you want to put yourself in other people's shoes and um, try to understand them while contributing or collaborating. Another thing you also gain while contributing to open source is the global perspective. Now you're contributing to a project that has over a thousand users and um, over a thousand contributors from different parts of the world. And this gives you an opportunity to learn from these different individuals on a daily basis. So like every day you have an opportunity to learn a new thing or a new topic or a new concept that you've never really been introduced to previously. And then let's not forget collaborations. You know how to work with um, uh, complex teams and complex organizations and give and review and receive feedbacks. And this is a very important skill that most persons are still struggling with. But in the open source space, you get the opportunity to, to understand how to give feedback without offending people or making it look like you're, um, you're trying to um, hit down on people's thoughts or even um, shut down other persons. And you learn how to receive feedback from different people without feeling like they're um, directly attacking you or um, pointing to you towards something. So like this is something that 
contributing to open source has helped me gain and then some of the benefits that come with these non-contributions personally i have um, gained this um, field experience in different aspects and um, something i recently learned while contributing to open source that i had no idea of is research so i'm leading this um this um, research survey in the chaos community focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion. We're trying to understand how our metrics, our DEI metrics, affect um, underrepresented groups. Now, this is something I had no idea of, but because it's a topic that I really like, and I wanted to find out how these chaos metrics are used in day-to-day -day interactions amongst underrepresented groups that they're actually targeted to us. I had to take it up. And um, so far, there's so much that I have learned in the process. And it's something that I wouldn't have been able to even get on if I didn't join the community call one day and um, the topic was mentioned and I decided to volunteer to take it up. So you can also, um, at the end of the day, use these things to build your portfolio and to build your resume. So you have a, sol a solid skill, um, field experience from collaborating with people on um, different aspects as well. And then you learn soft skills and even new technologies and new tools. For persons that are not familiar with most technologies, you gain to um, use new tools that are open source. Most of them are not, but they're in the process of contributing. You get to discover how these things work and you build a solid network in the community through um, peer recognitions and um, so many uh, yesterday was the github universe and i saw so many stars posting their, their pictures this is something that um at first you would say it is it's not just a star but it is not just a star because these persons have dedicated their time to contributing to open source to the point where they've been recognized globally for their contributions that's something that open source also paves the way for for you and so like it doesn't actually um, rely on whether you're just a developer or you're contributing just to the code base, but a lot of persons that have gained this recognition, most of them are not even developers. And then you can find greater job prospects while um, also collaborating and you end up contributing to the greater good. Um, the thought of knowing that you're contributing to a particular project or initiatives and it's saving so many lives or it's even influencing and affecting so many persons. It's, it's really um, mind-blowing. And um, this is another thing that open source paves the way for you to get involved and get um, engaged in. That does not even require you to like have these developer skills and um, knowledge on these different technologies. So now we've seen the different ways that we can contribute to open source with our skill set. And so I want to use this to finally uh, leave the, um, a note that um, when you're making your contributions to open source, do not look at your contributions or undermine your contributions simply because you didn't create a pull request. At first, when I started contributing, I used to always look down on my contributions that do not require creating a pull request or even um, finally getting that merge um, notification, yeah? And so whenever I make other contributions, I don't think they're tangible enough. And I always waited for the day that I'll finally fix an issue. And this made me not feel like I wasn't making enough impact in the open source space. And so whenever you're making your contributions, it doesn't matter whether, whether they're code based or they're actually focused on improving and impacting the open source community. So long as at the end of the day, you're giving you're giving out value to these communities. Just picture every contribution as an opportunity to gain significant change in your career, to gain significant change in your life, and uh, make those contributions with the best skills and the best um, dedications that you can, because they might, at the end of they take you to places you never pictured. And um, I think that brings me to the end of my section. Thank you for listening.